While it's great to be able to memorize a chain of 20 items, most practical applications require only memorizing a few items. This visualization technique can be easily applied to small reminders. If you need to remember a short list of four items to purchase, you can link or chain them together in the above manner. People often start the chain with their door, their car, or their neighborhood store to remind them when they walk out of their door, get into the car, or drive by the store. For example, one could visualize a 10-foot high bottle of milk in front of the store. The milk could then be linked to the next item, cheese. Cheese could be linked to oatmeal, then bread. I usually also memorize the number of items, four in this case, as a check. For longer lists, writing the list on paper is usually easier. Visualization is also a great way to remember short ideas that occur to you when you can't write them down. You may have ideas when you are away from a pen and paper, such as when exercising or bathing. Other times, such as in the middle of a conversation, it would be rude to write something down. When driving, it is neither safe nor convenient to write reminders. If you think of a great title for your book, The Dogs of War, you could picture dogs fighting in uniform like men in your living rooms. This visualization technique is also a great way to remember where you store or leave things. For example, if you leave your keys on the television set, you can visualize a five-foot key weighing 500 pounds crushing the television. If you leave your keys on your bookcase, you could visualize your bookcase covered with 10,000 keys swaying under the weight. If you leave your keys on your refrigerator, you could visualize your refrigerator being locked and requiring a turning gold key to open it. But an easier way to remember where you leave your keys is to leave your keys in the same place, or only in one or two places every time. It's easier to remember to just leave your keys on top of the refrigerator all the time than remembering a new reminder every day. Most often, forgetting where you left, stored, or filed objects is an organizational problem, not a memory problem. If you have no organizational system, of course you will lose and miss file items. If you are frequently misplacing items, you may need a better organizational system. Still, there will be some times when a perfect organizational system will not help you. When you leave your car at most airports, you can't park in the same parking lot every time. Using mnemonic techniques can remind you where you left your car. Even if you have a great organizational system, sometimes an item does not fit into a category. This is usually blatantly obvious when you're thinking, where should I file this or store this? You then store this item in one file or box. A year later, when you need it, you have no idea where you stored it. Then you spend an hour searching through everything you own. For these hard-to-classify items, a mnemonic reminder helps. Now you can remember 20 items. Are we finished? No. While we gave you 20 unrelated items to memorize, we did give you concrete items to memorize. Concrete items are the easiest to directly visualize. Anything involving motion is also easy to visualize. Fighting could be two men fighting. Speed can be a race car or speed racer. Running is, of course, a runner. Working is, of course, a person working. Abstract items require one more step. We need to convert abstract ideas into concrete visual reminders, which can then be linked and chained together. Strength could be a strong man. Intelligence could be Einstein. Rich could be a pile of gold. For example, if you were trying to remember that someone was strong, intelligent, and rich, you could link them to a strong man, Einstein, and a pile of gold. For example, consider liberty. Liberty cannot be seen, but the Liberty Bell can be seen. Freedom cannot be seen, but President Lincoln freeing the slaves can be seen. Consider trying to memorize numbers, which are abstract. There are ten digits, zero to nine. There are two simple ways of converting abstract digits to concrete pictures. One way is the number shape system. The number one looks like a spear, pen, or pencil. 
A spear, a pen, or a pencil can represent the number one. If you have a doctor's appointment at one, you can visualize a spear going through your doctor. If this is too violent a picture, picture your doctor struggling to carry a 200-pound pen. You could picture your doctor dressed as a caveman throwing a spear. The number two looks like a swan or duck viewed from the side. The body is the lower part of the number two and the head and curving neck are the upper part. If you have a dentist appointment at two, you could visualize a swan in your dentist's chair. The number four looks like a sail on a small single sail sailboat. The sailboat's mast is the downstroke of the four. The triangle cloth sail is the triangle of a four. If you have a veterinary appointment at four, you could visualize your veterinarian purchasing a sailboat with his fees. Or picture the veterinarian on his boat with his patients, like Noah. The number five looks like a fish hook, loosely. It's easy to visualize things stuck on a fish hook, but avoid commonplace examples. The number six looks like a golf club, loosely. The head of the golf club is similar to the circle of the six. It's easy to visualize things getting hit by a golf club, but avoid commonplace examples. The number seven looks like a cliff, as seen from the side. The top of the seven is the top of the cliff. The number eight looks like a snowman. It's possible to visualize making or interacting with a snowman. The number nine looks like a balloon with a string or ribbon hanging down. It's easy to visualize a balloon bursting or a balloon carrying the linked item away. The number zero looks like a hole or an egg. It's easy to visualize falling down a hole or having eggs thrown at the object to be linked. The number three does not have a close shape reminder. The three can be either rotated 90 degrees clockwise to look like a curvy W or it can be rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise to look like a curvy M. The curvy W looks like the cartoon representation of female breasts. The curvy M looks loosely like a bird in flight, looking head-on at the bird, such as a seagull. I don't recommend using a bird for three, since we have used a swan for two. Some people just use a three-leaf clover for three, which has three leaves, but does not look like the number three. It only takes a few minutes to memorize the number shape system. Later, when you have a few spare minutes, such as when commuting or waiting in line, you should recall and practice the number shape system a few times to the point where you can easily use it.